Hi everybody, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. In this video, I'm very excited about it. We're going to be seeing how we can unlock pseudo elements positioning within an entire parent instead of having it relative to the element itself. Um, you can already sort of do this, but it becomes a bit hard to move things around. But if you have a grid set up and you're positioning things on the grid template, just makes it so much easier. So we're gonna be seeing exactly how to do that in this video. It's a lot of fun. It's one of these more creative things you can do with pseudo elements. Just lots of good stuff. Let's jump into it. All right, so the very first thing that we wanna do is come onto my content here and actually give ourselves a grid. Uh, so we'll just come here and do a display grid on content. So the content is the white box that we see here. So by doing that, nothing really changes right off the bat. Um, because, well, we have a grid, but nothing is going on. Now, I am using Firefox to do this, so what we can do is bring this up, and you can see here that I have my uh, grid that I can put on. So I'm just going to leave that on so we can see it while I'm working, and I think I'm going to change the color of it, even though that sometimes bugs out, but something we can see a little bit uh, easier. So with that blue right there. I think that's going to make it just a little bit easier overall when we're working. We can see we have a grid uh, right there. So I'm also going to give this a grid... Uh, template columns. Let's do repeat and let's try six columns with one, uh, yeah, one FR each. So we just end up with six columns going all the way across. Can't really see them yet, but once we place our stuff on there, it'll work a bit better. So here on my title, we can give this a uh, grid column of one over negative one and uh, not negative two, negative one. So that should make it stretch the whole way across like that. And then that's just a paragraph now. Normally I'd want that on a class, but just because this is a simple demo site, we can do the exact same thing right here. Um, just so we're on our grid, but we've split that all up. Now, normally I probably wouldn't be doing something like this, but um, because I want to play with where my pseudo elements and all of that are, that's what this grid is really going to be here for. This isn't a grid that I would normally have coming in like this just because it's a little bit of overkill just for a title element. But if I really needed to play with my items here, it could be something that makes sense for me to come in and create a more complicated grid than I really need um, from, you know, from the original standpoint, just because it makes it a little bit easier for me to play around with. Um, so let's come on my title here and we're gonna create a pseudo element. So title, and we'll do a before. And actually we're gonna play with both before and after. So I might as well set these both up uh, at the beginning because there's whenever you're using pseudo elements there's a few things you need to have one of them is content content uh, if you don't know a lot about pseudo elements I have a three-part mini series two-part I don't remember I have a mini series <laughs> that dives in deep dives into them really um, but one thing that's really important is you need content because without that your pseudo element will never exist so we have my content there and then let's leave this a position absolute. And I'm actually going to leave it just like this for a second and we're going to explore the different things that uh, we can do with this position absolute. So let's give it a background first so we'll be able to see it. I'll give it a background of current color just like that. We won't be able to see it yet. Um, current color is going to take the color of the font that is being used in that area. So it's not something you see terribly often. Um, it doesn't have the most use cases especially now that we have CSS variables, but pseudo elements, if you want it to the background to match the color of your element, it's a really nice use case for it. So current color on there. And now let's actually get it to work. So I'm going to do a top of zero, bottom of zero, right of zero, left of zero, and hit save. And it should take over my whole screen just like that. There we go. So right now, this position absolute, it's relative to my body or my viewport because I've never declared any other position anywhere in my document. If I come up here to my content, actually, um, usually when I'm doing pseudo elements, I'm doing a position absolute on the pseudo element, and then I'm going on to the element itself, and I'm doing a position of relative on there. So if I do that, you can see it's actually covering exactly the area that my title was in. In this case, though, I don't want to do that. In this case, I want my position relative to be up here. And position relative here. And that's going to cover the entire white box. Because this top zero, left zero, all of that, it's not looking at the padding. It's not looking at anything else. It's just going all the way across that content area. Where this gets interesting, though, when you have the parent, so my content here, being um, a grid, container 
is that when it's a grid container, we can actually position things absolutely on the grid itself. So let's take a look at that. Um, that's on these two. Actually, let's pull all of this off because <laughs> I don't want them the same for everything. Let's just do my title before for the moment. And we'll hit save, it should look the same. But now what I'm gonna do is say grid column. And let's do, just for fun, a four over five. And now you can see it's fitting on my grid column of four over five. Isn't that really cool? That's really exciting to me. So it's on the grid column of four over five. But do you notice something else? It's not fitting completely within the grid because I've only declared a grid column. The top and the bottom are still relative to the element itself. So I find that fascinating. I find that really interesting. And uh, I think you could probably do some fun stuff with that. But for the moment, what I wanna do is I wanna position that guy down here in this empty space. So in that, I want to start at four, but I want to go all the way to the end. So the end can be a negative one. It's gonna go all the way across. Now to really fit this in properly, I'm gonna make a much more complicated grid than <laughs> I mentioned before. We're making grids that maybe um, you wouldn't need them to be this complicated from the beginning. Uh, or in a normal circumstance. But I want to come in here with grid template rows. And this time we're going to do a repeat of four. So I want four columns, but I'm going to do a min content here instead of one FR. And my grid disappeared. Doo -doo -doo. Of course, it's not working. Did I forget a semicolon? No. Oh, it is working, but you can see it's all getting smushed down there at the end. Uh, so to actually get this to work, we, again, this is, we're getting a little more complicated than maybe you normally would. My title, I want this to be the grid row of one over three, four, four. Is that right? There we go. So it's going from one to four. So it's actually taking up three lines on there. So it's taking up three of the four. The, where did it? So I created four columns and this is taking up three of them. Kind of handy. Um, and the reason I used min content instead of one FR is one FR is going to make all of these have to be an equal size. So the equal size, the, well, it's not quite that, but you can see that they're, they're much bigger <laughs> when I do this, um, because they're trying to distribute the empty space they have available to them. Whereas min content is going to make sure that things are as small as they possibly can. So, uh, in this case, they're as small as they possibly can. This is, this has more space on it because there's a margin top and bottom on it. Uh, so that's why we have a little bit of extra coming up on those. So with all of that work done, <laughs> I can now come onto this title before and instead of doing, I want to keep that, but now I can also do a grid row of three over four. And look at that. I get this nice little decorative element that squeezes in nicely right there. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, just leaving it something like that could be fun. Now, you would have to be careful with responsiveness. Obviously, it's not perfect. And if I shrink down, um, I think I would get some issues as well. You can see there's, it's not perfect. <laughs> um, so it's not, this isn't necessarily an ideal situation, but it is one of those ones where you can start getting creative with how you're positioning stuff. And maybe something that would be a bit more realistic will be this other one that we're gonna set up. So that would be my after. So title after. Once again, we already have the content and a position of absolute on here. Uh, so that means I can just come in and we'll give, uh, let's give it a background first. Background, let's go teal. It's sort of contrasty with my orange that I have here. And so we have my teal. Then what else do we need to have on here? We want to do a left. Uh, let's start with left of zero, right of zero. I'm going to play, we'll do top of zero, bottom of zero once again, and it's going to cover everything. Uh, but this time we're going to place it on my grid. Let's turn that grid back on. And so we can do, we might as well keep it consistent. We'll keep it here at the bottom. Grid column. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do a grid column, am I? No, I'm not. I'm just going to do a grid row. So grid row is going to be 1 over negative 1. Because I want it to take up the entire height, but I want it. I don't want it to include the padding that we had in there. I just want it to be the height of the content that's inside. And then... Instead of having the left to the right, what I could do here is I'm going to take my right off actually. And let's just give it a width of like 0.5M. So it gets much smaller. And then my left, we could do a negative 0.5M. So it should pull it oh, wrong way. I wanted that to be a positive. There we go. You can have it pulled in a little bit. And you get this nice type of you know bar thing that could drag all the way down like that. Or this is where if you need to change how it is, maybe you don't want it to be going all the way down. Maybe this could stop at line number four. 
and you can get a nice little bar like that exact height of the title now something like this you could probably pull off without um or i know you could pull off because i do decorative elements like this a lot of the time you wouldn't really need grid to be able to do something like that but you know if then um if you wanted to get a little bit more you know something like that that's not the whole height or again we're, we're going all the way to the bottom with something this could be a little bit harder to achieve you could definitely do it with the top and the bottom using a calc and uh, bringing in the size of the padding but I do find it really interesting or why don't we push this just a little bit more and maybe going like I don't really like all of these use cases so just for fun let's move this teal box down over here and do something that maybe you'd like uh, you you could see yourself using uh, because as we saw this one on this side can cause a little bit of issue so what I'm going to do is let's move that down so grid row we're actually going to do a four over five And then we're gonna and we're gonna put this here back to a left of zero and a right of zero. And then we can also do a grid column of uh, we're gonna go with a one over three like that. And here in my paragraph, we could actually start this at my line three. And now you're going, oh, they're a little bit too stuck together. I'd like a little bit more space there. Why don't we come all the way back up to where I define my grid and might as well keep this with all my grid stuff. We could do a grid or we don't need to say grid anymore. We can just say gap. So I just want a column gap. Uh, so a column gap of say 1M or 0.5M or something like that gives us that little space in between. And while this one could cause us a little bit of issues, I do think if I put this into responsive mode. We should be able to get a better idea. Um, yeah, that top one, as you can see, it's causing a little bit more. It's not perfect. Um, but here on that bottom one, it's really going to adjust really well with how everything's set up there. Um, it's going to grow and shrink and this content can sort of adjust automatically. So I do think that that works maybe a little bit better than that other one. And you can see here, I have some fun old CSS overflowing. <laughs> you make your CSS is awesome jokes right now. Um, so for stuff like that, or even, you know, maybe you want your grid gap, maybe we want a gap of 1M all the way around. And my paragraphs, do, 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 let's just come down, margin zero. There we go. And it's starting to fall in line a little bit better. So just a few fun things that you can do here. I'm not saying you would probably want to do this all the time. I do think that there's times when you probably wouldn't want to push things or go this far with it. There's much easier use cases. But this is one of those really fun things with CSS where if you are using a grid or you really need precise positioning of something, maybe it's a good idea to use a grid to get that pseudo element to go exactly where you want it to go. So I really hope you like this. I hope you learned something fun here. I hope you can think of really fun and creative ways to use this. And if you did, please let me know in the comments down below or if you have already used this. I would love to know about it. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for your support every single month. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.